Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and I am very excited to be with here here with you guys today, uh, discussing today's talk. Um, I'm still a little bit sick. It's mostly like kind of a stuffy nose and a little bit of a cough, so I will do my best <laughs> to not be sniffly and uh, gross <laughs> into the microphone and I will uh, definitely not get to cough or at least cut out the coughs, edit them out once I <laughs> am done recording, but if I miss the occasional one, my apologies. Um, I'm at that kind of point where I'm not like completely de-energized, like I have a decent amount of energy. I'm still tired, but not like as absolutely exhausted as I was over the weekend when I was like had like a four hour nap both days. Um, but I am still like kind of miserable because I have this gross cough that won't go away. And yeah, like my nose is just not running, but just like, you know, stuffy and nasty. So, um, anyway (laughs) so today's talk is elder stevenson's talk bridging the two great commandments and i always love talking about the two great commandments and um kind of being reminded of the importance of them and like the importance that christ put on them and how simple and complicated it can be, right? But like, it all comes down to those two things, to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And it's comforting that it can be that simple and that straightforward, right? Um, It's still not easy and it's not like it's... um, it's not like we're all good at it, right? <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, if I can say, did I love God today? Did I love my neighbor today? You know, then I know that I've I've done my best to do that. Then I can confidently say that, like, it was a good day. And um, Elder Stevenson uses the analogy of suspension bridges to talk about the kind of interdependence of the two great commandments. And so um, he talks specifically about the Golden Gate Bridge that has these two big, um, what does he call them? Towers, these two big towers, right? That then um, hold up the rest of the bridge and for the bridge to work, both of those towers have to be strong and solid um, for everything else to hang off of them, right? And so he likens that to the two great commandments and how interdependent they are on each other. So of course, the two great commandments are to love the Lord thy God with all your soul with all your heart your soul and with all your mind and the second is to love thy neighbor as thyself and he kind of dives into each of these i actually really loved um when he describes loving the lord because we say that all the time right like love you love the lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind but to actually think about what each of those words means he talks about like loving with your heart which means your nature and loving with your soul your entire being and loving with your mind your intelligence and intellect and so kind of like all of the facets of your being right like physically mentally emotionally spiritually like you're loving the lord and on first perusal on like first thinking that can be that can feel very daunting right like 
Am I supposed to love the Lord with everything that I have? That's a lot, right? That's a that's a big ask. Um, but also like the fact that we can, that we get to love the Lord with all that we have, that all that we are. And so we have a lot of different ways that we can show our love. Um, and so sometimes mentally, is it ain't it, right? But like spiritually, you got it. Or like you have that kind of give and take and trade off and obviously we are striving to love with everything that we have and do everything. But if one thing, if just one thing, you can only manage one thing in a day, then that's enough. Um, and so I really liked that, like going, he didn't, he didn't take a whole lot of time on this, but just that extra, like, um, to think about each of those words in that definition was pretty cool. And then he talks about loving your neighbor. And, um, of course, he uh, reminds us um, uh, this love should include all of God's children without any regard to gender, social class, race, sexuality, income, age, or ethnicity. Um, and that we are supposed to, you know, mourn with those that mourn and stand with those stand to, with those in need of comfort. Comfort those that stand in need of comfort. That's the, that's the phrasing. Um, and lift people up where they stand. Um, I think it's always a good reminder that everyone is our neighbor, right? Literally, physically, our neighbors, right? Those who live near us, around us, those we go to church with, those that we work with, um, but also people who we may interact with on social media or that we re interact with very, very little, but just like a cashier at Walmart or something, that we should all also be um, treating them with the same respect and love that we treat our neighbors and our family and our friends and regardless of who they are, right? Um, the most important thing is that they are a child of God and that they are a person and because of that they are worthy of love. Um, and so later on he brings us back to the interdependency, right? Um, of how these two commandments work together and are dependent on each other. And he says, it's kind of a long quote, but I think it's worth it. It's really good. He says, the increasing contention in the world suggests, however, that we at times fail to see or remember this. Some are so focused on keeping the commandments that they show little tolerance of those they see as less righteous. Some find it difficult to love those who are choosing to live their lives outside of the covenant or even away from any religious participation. Alternatively, there are those who emphasize the importance of loving others without acknowledging acknowledgement that we are all accountable to God. Some refuse entirely the notion that there is such a thing as absolute truth or right and wrong and believe that the only thing required of us is complete tolerance and acceptance of the choices of others. Either of these imbalances could cause your spiritual bridge to tip or even to fall. And I think both of these are important, right? Obviously, these are, there's a reason that it, they are the two great commandments, like Jesus says, and the other is like unto it, right? And I think about this all the time, but like, as we are loving God, we are going to love our neighbors because they are his children. And when we love God, we love those around us because he loves them. And because they are people and beautiful people, complex beings, just like we are trying to get through this crazy thing called life. And it's easier, not easy, but easier to show grace and forgiveness and kindness to people who may not be showing that to us. And I'm not, not to say that you should like let every toxic person into your life, right? But like to 
be as graceful as you can and as kind as you can to people when it's a situation that nobody's winning in um and i think the hard part for me about this quote is the like the part about um those those who emphasize the importance of loving others without acknowledgement that we are all accountable to god and that is hard for me when i'm interacting with people who are not of our faith or who don't participate in religion right they do not hold themselves to those same standards because they don't believe in them they don't have the same beliefs that we do and so um that's where it gets like a little dicey for me personally and you may think differently and that's totally that's totally fair um but like in my own belief system my own morals like i am not going to i don't know do something that would be like well you're accountable to god right i know that's not what other stevenson is saying he's not saying like that we should judge people or tell people that they're going to be judged in a certain way by god because we don't know that um that's not our place at all but i do think i mean and that's exactly what he's saying is that it can go too far right just in that first paragraph he says some find difficult to love those who are choosing to live their lives outside of the covenant or even away from any religious participation and so i think it can be really easy for this balance to tip in the way of um judgment and um it really comes down to our own choices right um what is within our control within our agency is to love people and then to follow our commandments and and keep our covenants and we are not in control of other people's actions and whether something looks like i don't know i think it's a really it can be a really touchy subject i think for people um but i'm of the mind of just like I, I cannot control others, and so I'm going to control myself. I'm going to control my actions. I can only control my actions. And we'll actually talk about that a little bit in the next episode, which I'm kind of excited about. But um, there is a balance. And so that's my question for you guys is how can you work on this balance between loving God and loving your neighbor? Uh, whichever way that that needs to lean or maybe you're like perfectly upright and it's great Um, but just kind of evaluate where you are on that that spectrum of uh, of balancing these two things Um, because I really truly believe like as you love God you're going to love your neighbor because they are his children and as you are loving your neighbor you are loving God because you are serving him through serving his beloved children and by being his his hands here on earth like you are worshiping him that way and i think that's really beautiful so how can you work on this balance between loving god and loving your neighbor in your life um that is all i've got for you guys today thank you so much for listening and or watching this episode um i know i'm a couple days late or i guess a day late a day-ish late on this episode apologies for that thank you for your patience (laughs) and i will talk to y'all tomorrow